James Harden and that beard of his. Look, this guy's relentless. We know he's going to attack the basket all night long. So I'm going to make it my personal mission to keep that from happening. As long as we keep jumping those passing lanes, we can give them a run for their money. I know I'll be ready. It's a Western Conference battle at the FedEx Forum in downtown Memphis as the Grizzlies look to work the home court advantage. A quick trip here for the Rockets, just one game. The new group. Houston also making some changes. Brewer comes in for Monte Yunus, and it's Patrick Beverly in for Ty Lawson. Clark, looking around the league, there's no team that teams want to play less than the Memphis Grizzlies. They just wear you down. Well, they play a physical brand of basketball. They play hard. Everybody's on the same page. And even if you beat the Grizzlies, they take a lot out of you in terms of how they try to wear you down. So on the floor for Houston, Beverly and Harden near the backcourt. Brewer is out there with Trevor Ariza. And it's Howard in at the five down low. And the Grizzlies played so well against all the other playoff teams. Part of it is that they just have a style that matches up well with anyone. You know, that's the thing with the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, there isn't a team that gives them too much trouble anywhere in the league. They're good at home and on the road. They're used to playing in tight, low-scoring games. And they create that situation with their deliberate style. And the Rockets have lost out on some free agent wars the past few years. They have remained competitive, but you wonder what could have been if they landed or kept some of those big names. The Rockets making a switch here. Thornton's checked in. And with the Rockets, it's no secret that they take a very analytical approach to team building. Greg, you and I talked about that. Clark, you know, you wonder if that hurts them in free agency. Well, you know, when your front office makes no qualms about viewing players as simply just assets, it can be a hard sell to a free agent. Now let's send it over to Doris Burke, who was able to talk with Kevin McHale. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, plenty of reason for confidence coming into this game. They're leading the series two games to none this season, but he's far from complacent. He said their length and shot blocking inside does present some challenges. We can't get careless in our attack and fail to react to help side defenders. Guys, let's see how they do. Thank you, Doris, and quite a focus for the game here early on, and an important one too, guys. Yeah, I mean, up against this team, finding ways to crack their defensive shell is always going to be the number one challenge. And I would say it would be the number two and number three challenges as well, guys. Howard setting the pick for Beverly. Pass to Ariza. And it's right, sending it back. Now Udrick. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Tries it from 19. And it's sent back by Howard. 
and the basket by Stokes. Rockets trail. Ariza outside. They set the pick. Pass to Brewer. Shoots the three. Can't get it to go. Now the Grizzlies take it the other way. Their last game, a win against Boston. Looking to carry it into this one. That's a huge win. A big third quarter comeback. Definitely a great game to watch as well. Anytime you, you see a comeback like that, it's going to be entertaining, except maybe for the team on the short end of the stick. And the foul called on three. That is his first foul of the game. Got some nice passing there by Houston. And Brewer gets to a reason. Buries the long-range jumper. Ariza's got five. How in the world did they let him get that wide open? Freak with it. Over in the corner, Barnes. Right, the pass to Freak. Fires the three. Rebounded by Howard. Oh, that's a tough three-point try when you've got the defense right there. Well, he'd have to be really good to knock down a shot like that against that kind of defense. Last game for Houston, they picked up the win against Indiana. And we've talked about how in the NBA you've got to earn your points the hard way. And that really wasn't the case in that game for them. No, there was no hard way about it. I mean, they got their points easily on dunks and layups against the defense that really didn't offer much of a fight. Screen by Howard. Ariza, right side. And Beverly kicks to Howard. Six on the shot clock. Floats one up. And the layup good by Beverly. And the Rockets lead by one. And off to a strong start offensively. He's got a nice touch. Now here's Freak. Now the pass to Barnes. Udrich dishes to right. That's good. And it's Udrich with the assist that time. You know, guys, when you see it come together like that, I mean, that's the offensive set you want to have. Well done. And here are some big men who, when they get it in tight, are as close to a sure thing as we've got. Here are the top field goal percentage leaders among NBA centers and power forwards. Brandon Wright on top. You know, he's gotten to the top of that list because he has a terrific sense and touch around the basket. He just finds ways to convert low post opportunities. Yeah, I concur with that. But it's not just finesse with him, guys. I mean, he can use his strength as well. He'll get his points the soft or the hard way. Freak kicks to Barnes. There's Freak. Misses the three. And that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage, Kevin. Pretty clear they're dominating that area. They've come out with a lot more energy and effort so far. Stokes with the rebound. Memphis trailing here. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. The Grizzlies making a change here. Carter's checked in. We've got 33 seconds left here in the first quarter. Here's Beverly. Udrich grabs the board. Memphis has gone 0-4 from three-point land to start out. Looking cold from outside. Vicious to Freak. Carter right side. Right with a screen on Beverly. Here's Freak. But they'll get another chance. Udrich for three. What a play. Simply drains it in at the buzzer. What a three at the horn as they end the quarter on a high note. Couldn't agree more. That'll give them a nice little lift, I think, going into the next quarter. And earlier, we heard from Dwight Howard, and it's very clear how much he appreciates his head coach, Kevin McCann. It's been great since day one. What a difference a change of location makes, especially when... So we've reached the end of the first half of play. 
Memphis out in front. Thank you, Kevin. Dwight, what's your assessment of the team you're playing here tonight? That's our team. You know, they play hard, they play together, they move the ball, and uh, they, they know how to play uh, within the offense, you know. And uh, we've been doing a better job on the defensive end, and I think tonight we came out with the right mentality. We just got to keep it up. Dwight, thank you. They know they've got their hands full, Kevin. Thanks, Doris. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter started. And the second half about to start here in just a few moments. We watched a great quarter. Making two changes. Capella's checked in, and it's Patrick Beverly in for Corey Brewer. And the Grizzlies leading by 21, and so in the game for the Rockets. We've got Harden, Patrick Beverly out there with Lawson, then it's Trevor Ariza, and it's Capella in at the five spot. The offensive rebound, and the layup falls. Not only is their lead big, but their advantage on the boards is huge, too. They've been the aggressors, plain and simple, outworking them, fighting for every loose ball. And the foul called on Freak. That'll be his second foul of the game. You know, another point of contention between every NBA fan is, is whether or not the age restriction is a good thing. Some want it increased, others want it gone altogether. Uh, you know, for me, it's a matter of whether or not you as a team feel that that player can make an impact on your roster. And let's get your take, guys, on the scoring breakdown for the Grizzlies. I tell you what, they've hit the boards hard in this one, and it's led to an abundance of second chance points. I mean, they've gotten a lot of second chance points. And, and also, how about the points they've gotten in transition or on the fast break tonight? That's been a huge factor as well. Well, guys, this was never really a contest, just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for Memphis. But, Steve, you know, you don't see this kind of a blowout often. But tonight, this is a quality win across the board to deliver out, uh, Clark, this, this kind of punishment. Well, you know what? I thought they did a nice job of playing against the game. Uh, they kept the pressure on and clearly were dominant in every area. And so this is going to end up as victory number 24 on the year. And they're finally going to take a game in this heated season series. This victory will give them one win, two losses, with one game left to play on the year against the Rockets. A good win, and a lot went into it. But I just like the showing from Mike Conley. He just looked like an orchestrator out there. His teammates kept running to the open spot, and he found them time and time again. And you can sense the fact that they didn't want to let the fans down here. It's been a fun night to be in the building. Greg, it really has been. I mean, such a lively, vibrant atmosphere, and no doubt that played a part in the big win. Decker passes to Harris, and they immediately answer back with a dunk at the other end. You know, there are a lot of bigger power forwards than him in the NBA, but very few that rise up like he can. And a wide open look for free. And here's Decker. So no problem for Memphis as they get the win. They poured it on tonight, Clark. A dominant showing in front of a crowd that loved every minute of it. I don't think they have anything but positives to take away from this win. Offensively, defensively, every aspect of the game, it all went right for them. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Mike, when you take a look at how this team's been playing over the last several games, are you happy with the way things are gelling? Uh, yeah, you know, I think we're, we're playing very well. I think we're finally getting the chemistry that we, that we want, and uh, everybody's just playing hard right now. 
All good things contributing to victories, Mike. We appreciate it. Gentlemen, back to you. Thank you, Doris. Great interview once again. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and Doris Burke, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. Now we'll head over to the award-winning Ernie Johnson, who's not too far away. EJ? The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Thank you, Kevin. And now we have the opportunity to present our Jordan player of the game, Mike Conley. He put up a new season high tonight. And if he keeps shooting like he did tonight before the season's over, he might top it. A big key to his team's victory here. They asked an awful lot from him tonight offensively, and he delivered. When they needed a big bucket, he was the guy they turned to, and he delivered, like I said. I mean, this guy was unbelievable. He did not shy away from the moment. Conley's got so many things he brings to the team. He controls the flow of the offense like a conductor. Everything starts with him. He's a threat all over the place in transition, on the pick and roll, and especially from three-point range. And that'll do it for our broadcast tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, for me and, and Kenny Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal, and Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K Sports crew, have a wonderful evening.